Okay, VC. Hello, I'm back. Um, back in business. Uh, last time we left off, I think I had a Phasmation PP300 on here, and the Lyra Scala was in the shop because I uh, the stylist popped off the cantilever, and uh, Soundsmith. This is right after I got it back, by the way, from Soundsmith, and Soundsmith was nice enough to fix that up really quickly and get it back to me in post haste and um and now I'm rolling again with uh, the cartridge as you can see here we're listening to uh Street Noise Julie Driscoll and uh Trinity uh, Brian Auger and the Trinity um this is a great record by the way great double album from the late 60s as you can hear um so that, and the, that's that, and the other big change I'm going through right now is this, which is the Manly Chinook um, tube phono preamp. Had the uh, Sutherland PHT, which is right now resting on my floor there, battery powered. This uh, has a regular uh, electric power supply, um, might have to upgrade the cord at some point, but not sure if other people have done that, but uh, you know, I haven't played with the tubes or anything. I just got this, so I'm sort of breaking it in and listening to it and really liking it. I think it's got a, you know, it's it's similar in sound. It's probably, you know, someone in the price competitive region, um, but, uh, you know, it's tube, so it's a little bit of a different sound. It's my first real experience with a to preamp and let's take this off while we're talking um, so you know it's got a slightly like sweeter high end um, I would describe it as, as sort of wetter if that makes any sense um, you know whereas whereas the Sutherland had more defined maybe, you know, more sharply etched edges. Um, you know, maybe the Manly's a little softer on there, but it makes it very pleasing to listen to. Um, sort of grasping for terms here, but these are my first impressions. But I'm really enjoying it. I, you know, first day I got it, I think I played a lot, <laughs> a lot of records. Um, so, anyway, uh, you know, in terms of just overall presentation, top to bottom, um, you know, bass, highs, beautiful mid-range. I mean, it sounds really, it, it, again, it's very, I would say very similar, just with it, with a different, with a different uh, character to the, to the sound. Um, so, you know, sort of, uh, just depending on what you like, but, uh. I don't know. I'm getting used to this, so uh, this is probably a keeper, at least for a little while, and then uh, we'll see how that goes, but, but I really, really like it. Okay, let's look at some records. Okay, um, we're back over here. Uh, look at some records. I got a bunch of stuff since the last time I did a video, um, and some stuff for my birthday, which my wife got me, which is amazing, but I'll save that till the end that's kind of the highlight um but i'll just go through what was in the top of my pile here i just grabbed um this is uh bags and train uh milt jackson and uh, john coltrane um this is the 45 rpm reissue um it says it's on atlantic but i feel like uh somebody else did this um, recently so I'm not sure exactly who repressed this wish I did it's a great um, sounding recording and it's a great sounding uh, repressing highly recommended great album too um, one I never had before um, 
you know, it says 2013 Atlantic, um, manufactured by Rhino. So, you know, maybe it's pressed in Germany by Palace. Well, that helps too. Um, you know, once Coltrane's horn starts blowing in this, you really hear the room, um, you know, that, that he's in. And it's just, uh, you're there. It's one of those you're there kind of moments. Um, so this is really, this is really well worth it. Um, <clears throat> sort of an oddball. Uh, Clifford T. Ward, Home Thoughts. This is uh, on, uh, I think it's a British pressing because it's got the HMV sticker on there with the price of uh, two pounds ninety. Um, it's on Charisma, which sort of uh, drew me to it, and uh, I took a chance on it, and it's really, really good. It's like a, it's sort of an early seventies, maybe singer songwriter, you know, British singer songwriter type of uh, record. Really um, sweet songs. Well written, good like you know just well constructed music, nice melodies, you know very much in a sort of British you know pop the Beatles tradition of uh, nice arrangements, uh, great songwriting, or re at least really good songwriting. I, I highly recommend it. I, I really really like this uh, record. Um, not sure whatever became of him. I know he had a few albums in the early seventies and then kind of dropped off. It's kind of like Jimmy Spheris, like that. It's sort of the British Jimmy Spheris to me. I might have done something on Jimmy Spheris before, but he's another really great songwriter from the early 70s that faded. Um, so, and this is a nice little, nice little inside there. Um, trying to think of what are the highlights here. Wherewithal is a great song. And um, there's another one in here that really stands out. Where's it going to end, maybe? Um, I know the lyrics, and I, it's not in the title so uh, that I'm thinking of, so I can't place it, and I can never, I never remember the names of songs. But anyway, the whole album is really good. Uh, just picked this up, Amy Lou Harris, um, Elite Hotel. I don't, I haven't really listened to this. I listened to half of it once, so I can't really comment on it. Um, sort of right after her period with uh, Graham Parsons, which I love, those Graham Parsons albums. And, of course, she's a great singer. That goes without saying. He, she does some Graham Parsons songs on here, Sin City and, and Wheels, at least. She also does uh, an Ooh Las Vegas. Um, she does uh, Here, There, and Everywhere, uh, Jambalaya, Hank Williams song. So, you know, can't be bad, right? Um, I'm not a huge country music fan, but I like some stuff in this. You know, what I heard, I liked. All right, we're going to save that one for later. Um, this is an oddball. Chris DeBerg. You remember the guy from Lady in Red? Which is a song I've always loved. It's corny, but it's also, again, a very well-written song. I always love a good, well-written song with interesting harmony and a beautiful melody. And that's got it, you know. Um, so the guy can write a song. I knew that. Um... Uh, this is an earlier album called Crusader, and it's got a uh, four-part suite called Crusader, with the fall of Jerusalem in the court of Saladin, the battlefield and finale. I mean, so it's like what Prague pop uh, a little bit, but um, you know, I love that stuff. Just love it. And this one again is sort of like the uh, Clifford Ward. It's really well-written songs, really good. Um, so. Again, I'm really glad I'm going to pick up another one of his records if I can, because, uh, you know, it turns out this guy um, wasn't just a one one off. Um, these aren't really like hits, but uh, at least not in the U.S., but uh, again, you know, really nice, well-written song. So, so that's a good one. Um, what's this? Oh, a... Uh, this is the uh, Razumovsky Quartets, Beethoven's Razumovsky series, which I believe comes about about halfway into his quartet, string quartet output, you know, after the early Mozarty ones, Haydnish 
quartets and the uh, later blow your mind modern sounding quartets and this is sort of right in the middle sort of a transition time but um, very accessible and a uh, great uh, set of quartets this is by the uh, quartetto italiano on Phillips just started listening to it sounds amazing and of course all the Beethoven quartets are must-haves in my opinion um, and so this is no exception uh, okay what else we got um, I'm gonna leave that for something else picked up this uh, Love's first album, I believe, 50th uh, anniversary mono edition. This sounds terrific. Uh, it's a er, it's a late or er, it just came out. Um, the latest repressing of this, I think, and um, from Rhino, and it really it really does sound um, nice. I don't know um, how they sourced it, but um, I'm not complaining. And it's a great album. I never I don't think I'd ever had this. I might have had it on CD at some point, but I can't remember if I listened to it much. Um, but big surprise, great album, um, right, you know, right from 67, just right in the heart of that psychedelic period. And, um, you know, love is, is really terrific. Um, here's another oddball. Hmm. Highlighting the oddball British records today. This is one I read about in, I think, Stereophile last month, um, Mary Head's Nigel Lived. And uh, it's on Intervention. Intervention has only done a few records so far. They did like the Flying Burrito Brothers and the Steelers Wheel album. I have the Steelers Wheel album. It's, it sounds incredible. Um, haven't got the Flying Burrito Brothers. I have another pressing of that. So they did this. And again, this sounds amazing. I think it's 45 RPM. Pretty positive. Yeah. And... Um, Really, just, just they just do an amazing job there. Um, they're really picking their targets and taking great care. And this is what an interesting album this is. Again, you know, just again, good songs, but different, very different. Um, another one of these guys, you know, sort of remind you of a Skip Spencer, Sid Barrett kind of thing. Even though, you know, I don't know if he was nuts, but um, or that's not the politically correct term, but I, I don't know if he was you know, suffering from a diagnosable mental illness. But, uh, um, and I don't know why I say that, but but it's, you know, it's weird in that kind of way in, in, a, in a lot of places. There's a lot of, like, found sounds kind of things, um, or at least uh, not found sounds, like almost like field recordings going on through this, which is really neat. And it's just, you know, very, like, of its own thing. Um, again, very pleasantly surprised by this. Highly recommended. Um, I got the 45 RPM. And then, I mean, I've never seen this in my life. I don't know. You probably haven't either. Um, or maybe you have. But it's it's just not. It's unusual. I was at a record fair last weekend going through some stacks. And what do I see but the original of this? Or at least the American original. I think it was the American original of this. I didn't even know it had an American release. Um, <laughs> it was like, what are the odds? I mean, I just picked this up, um, but I guarantee you that this sounds better than that. Um, so, very glad I got it. It was a nice find at the same record fair. Um, roll Call, Hank Mobley's Roll Call. I had this on the new Blue Note reissue, um, which are all very nice, very good, from high-res files. Um, but, not like this. This And this is not even the, the first... Uh, addition to this, this is the, uh, I think like the second probably, it's from I think 66, 67 when Liberty Records bought Blue Note they reissued all the earlier titles um, but it's got the Rudy Van Gelder stamper and um, sounds simply incredible and it's a great album so this was a, a great find and not ridiculously expensive alright so here are the um, here are the uh, birthday presents um, and if you've been watching, you know, this shouldn't surprise you, but, you know, can you take a wild guess what this is? <laughs> this is, um, 
of course a revolver British first pressing on black and yellow parlophone um, you know to me revolver is just the best album in the history of you know rock music anyway pop music and uh, you know this is the pinnacle and this is the original um, so having this is just uh, you know fabulous I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison with the with the American the American I think has a harsher sound to it um, at least the later Americans that I've heard orange capitals um, but um, you know I wouldn't necessarily call it a sonic masterpiece um, either um, the inner groove is not too bad it gets a little shady you know all the early Beatles like first pressings you know if you can find a good inner groove you know distortion free in those you're I mean it's a miracle um, people played these and they played them on cheap equipment and, and that's just what happened so that's the price of admission but it still sounds pretty great it's the it's the it's the document so um, fabulous to have that um, also got this which is sorry the British first pressing of another one of my top ten of all time albums uh, Astro Weeks on I think it's Red Warner I don't know but um, this sounds amazing um, I, I do have the recent I have an American original and a recent reissue which also sound great so this is not one of those blow you away sort of like oh it's so much better than the other ones I don't think um, but I mean just I just this album is just so freaking great and to have this is just you know it means a lot to me so um, and it does sound amazing too so hey uh, so that was terrific and the land the triumvirate of the birthday and probably the highlight for me um, is this bad boy the British first pressing of Hard Day's Night in mono on black and yellow parlophone um, this one sounds amazing uh, this is just a great mono album um, that's a great mono recording and a great mono you know mastering whatever they did on this album it's just what mono should be it's bright not bright but it's alive and present and clear and you can hear layers and um, you know, I haven't I haven't done a comparison with the mono remaster, but I'm guessing that it's very similar. Um, this might even have a little more life to it, uh, just because it's you know the tape was 50 years <laughs> younger. But I mean, this is just amazing, amazing. If you can get a hand your hands on this um, again in mono, that's what you want to do. So that was the highlight of my uh, birthday, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thank my wife greatly for that. So, that is all I've got for today. So, until next time, signing off.